Today, I am proud to announce that our next New Frontiers mission, Dragonfly. Dragonfly. So Dragonfly. Go Dragonfly. We're building a drone the size of a car and we're going to fly it on a moon. Dragonfly will explore Saturn's largest moon, Titan. <laughs> In 2027, Dragonfly will launch on its 872 million kilometer journey to Titan, the most Earth-like moon we've discovered so far. By the time Dragonfly's baseline mission is over, we'll have flown more than 100 miles, which is almost double the total distance covered by all of the Mars rovers combined. I'm a co-investigator on the Dragonfly mission, and I'm really looking forward to being able to see Titan through Dragonfly's eyes. Titan's been running a big experiment, and it's time for us to go collect the results. Titan is so amazing because in a lot of ways it's very Earth-like. It's the only moon in the solar system that has an atmosphere. It has rain, it has clouds, it has lakes and rivers and sand dunes and mountains. And so big picture, Titan has all of the things that we think are required for life. We think that there was a period in Earth's history around the time when life originated, when Earth's atmospheric composition was actually probably quite similar to Titan's atmospheric composition today. And so another one of the questions we have is, you know, what was the chemistry like on the early Earth? How was it related to what's happening on Titan today? And what does that tell us about the origin of life on Earth? Titan is enshrouded in this kind of orangey yellow haze that keeps you from being able to see the surface. And so it was like, okay, we can't see the surface. It's the only moon in the solar system that has an atmosphere. And now we're finding out that there's all of these carbon containing molecules in the atmosphere that are really, really interesting. And Titan is so interesting that we needed to know more about it. Titan is one of the best, if not the best place in the solar system to fly. If you personally were on Titan and you had some kind of wings attached to your arms for some reason, if you flapped your arms, you would actually be able to fly um, under your own power. It's actually, it's, it's that easy. And it's a combination of two things. One thing is that the gravity is pretty low on Titan. It's about one seventh of the gravity on Earth. So that helps um, because you don't need as much, you know, energy to get off of the ground. But the other reason why it's so easy to fly on Titan is that the atmosphere is actually more dense than it is at the surface of Earth. So um, it would be much, much easier, it is much, much easier, um, I think, to try to figure out a concept to fly on Titan versus trying to send a rover. Dragonfly is not a little backyard drone. It's about the size of a small car. And so that makes it you know, pretty robust to a lot of things that a backyard drone would not um, be robust to. Uh, although if it crashes into a tree, um, as long as we know that it crashed into a tree on Titan, we will be super excited. We will call that a successful mission because um, we found life on Titan accidentally. We just don't know that much about the surface. And so on the one hand, that's scientifically exciting. And on the other hand, that's a little scary when you're an engineer that's trying to build a spacecraft where you can't, you know, call AAA if something goes wrong because of the time delay in light travel between Titan and Earth, Dragonfly is going to have to navigate on its own. There isn't going to be somebody, you know, sitting on Earth with a joystick flying um, Dragonfly. There's no GPS at Titan. Um, there's nothing to tell it where it is. Our maps that we have right now are not very good. And so kind of one of these a little bit like, you know, build the plane as you're flying it type things um, in terms of how we navigate. And Basically, the way that it's going to be doing that is by taking a really, really lot of images. Where basically every time we fly, we're actually going to fly further than where we want to land so that we can do reconnaissance aerial imaging of the place we think we want to go next. And then we'll turn around and go back to where we had planned to land and land there. Once we tell it, okay, you know, you're gonna go do this thing. It will have the whole sequence of what it needs to do. It will be able to make decisions if something goes wrong um, and it will decide, okay, this is what I'm, what I'm doing now. Um, and then, you know, we'll report back and say, you know, look, mom, I did it, um, hopefully. <laughs> uh, but it definitely, there's definitely a lot of challenges involved in having these big time delays um, because we don't, we can't control anything in real time. We have all these ideas about the requirements for life 
and big picture we tend to think of the requirements of life as a source of energy, building blocks of life, so like just things that are made out of carbon, and some type of liquid. We think that Titan is a place that it has the possibility of, of having um, life. Things that we know we have on Titan are a whole, whole variety of what we call organic molecules. So one of the reasons why we're so excited about carbon when we're thinking about, you know, the search for life and the origin of life is that, um, you know, selfishly, uh, life on Earth is based um, on a lot of carbon containing molecules. And so that's one of the reasons why we're so excited about it. But actually atomically, it's very interesting. Carbon, carbon can make four different bonds. Um, whereas when you look at something like oxygen, which can really only make one bond or two bonds. If you think about your kids' Legos, you can only build so many things with a little like one piece Legos, but when you start using the two or the three or the four or whatever, you start to be able to build these really complicated things. And it's the same thing with carbon because it can make these four bonds. It really allows it to make all of these different kinds of molecules. Um, and we think that we see the evidence of a lot of that going on in Titan's atmosphere. So we already have a bunch of different simple little Lego structures in the atmosphere. And we just wanna know how complicated they got um, and you know whether or not that is you know kind of similar to the level of complexity that we see on on earth which might indicate the possibility for the presence of life and so we want to go and see you know with a with an actual titan scale laboratory what has formed from these processes and so you know the more opportunities we have to be able to explore places the fewer limitations we have on answering our science questions which is really important